<laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah, you as well. <clears throat> do you do cold plunge? Um, we were just talking about it. Yeah, it's uh, something that I do. I do occasionally, but I don't have one at my place, so it's not a regular part of my routine, but I would like it to be, and I guess I could do the cold shower thing, but it's, from you my understanding, yeah, from my understanding, yeah. it's not as, uh, I don't know, effective overall to like, you want to be fully immersed and kind of get the full experience. Yeah, it's, it, I don't think it's as effective, but it's pretty effective, especially you live in the fucking frozen communist shithole of canada <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's cold you get real cold water when's the last time you've been up there right, like, i don't go up there anymore you refuse right yeah i just fucking what they've done up there what they did with the trucker rally and what what trudeau's doing with guns and what they're trying to clamp down on censorship on the internet that guy can eat shit mm. like that that place needs 100 percent an overhaul of government like they're they're sliding down that dangerous road of communism that scares the shit out of me. Yeah, I. Uh, it's funny because even though I'm in Canada, it seems like the political the prevalence of political information and media is so much lesser than what goes on in the states because it's just far more interesting. But even the alternatives that I'm aware of on the political you know side of things that are trying to you know get Trudeau out and replace him. Not much better, from my understanding. It seems like everyone's... Uh, every time I go on Twitter, I see Jordan Peterson shitting on some other guy who's, like, <laughs> the next best option, apparently. Well, he likes that Pierre guy. What's that guy's name? I don't know. Pierre Poliver. What is his name? There's the, the, the guy who's the reasonable Republican-type character or conservative character. What is the... Yeah, I think he said it. Yeah, Pierre Poliver. That guy's very smart. Okay. He's very interesting. There's a really funny video. I don't know if you ever saw it, but <clears throat> um, he's eating an apple and he's talking to this reporter, and the reporter keeps asking him really stupid questions, like, "What do you mean by that? Like, what does that mean?" And like, like he catches this reporter, like, says, "Who? Who's saying this?" And it's. Have you seen that video? I've never seen it. Jamie will find it. Currently, you're obviously taking the populist. Uh pathway um what does that mean <laughs> well ap appealing appealing to people's uh, more emotional levels i would guess um i mean what certainly you mean certainly you certainly you tap certainly you tap uh, very strong ideological language quite frequently like what uh left wing you know this and that right wing they you know i mean it's, it's like just buzzwords <laughs> i never really talk about left but or right anyways a lot i don't of really believe in that okay <laughs> taking a it's it's a longer conversation, but it's very interesting because it just shows you the level of the the level of sophistication these fucking dopey reporters that are covering this kind of shit. Now they're they are just trying to always play gotcha stuff. The title was "Does it hurt him?" I wonder what the consensus is of like the average Canadian if they think it's oh well, this guy's legit or if they're like this guy doesn't care about us at all. It's a good question. I mean, I think uh, propaganda affects everyone and I, I think canadian propaganda is a little more tightened down in control what they did with the truckers like for example like the way trudeau just openly labeled them as racist and misogynist mm. and then when people were donating to this uh, trucker movement when they were trying to you know have this protest they they closed down people's bank accounts yeah, who donated i mean that is third world country shit yeah. The fact that they think they can do that in Canada is insane. Have you seen the uh, the ban of news in Canada to where if you're located in Canada, you can't access news outlets now because the news outlets or the social media platforms featuring the news outlets refuse to pay Canada their own fee, essentially? Uh -huh. So if I'm in Canada and I go on Instagram and try to go to a you know a news page that's outside of Canadian media... It'll literally say, can't view, unavailable in Canada. Yeah, it's crazy. That's nuts. That's like China. Yeah. I mean, it's literally like what they do in foreign countries that are run by dictators. Yeah, yeah, dude. The the bills, it seems like every couple of weeks there's some new gong show of a bill that everyone says is going to, you know, wipe out creators off social media or force yeah. you to make Canadian content only, which is like this super nebulous 
thing that you have no idea am i only gonna be able to talk about like maple syrup and beavers and shit or like what's it gonna be uh, you don't know so that's uh, a concern as somebody on youtube especially so yeah yeah but um yeah i've heard concerning things that my podcast at one point in time might not even be available in canada because of this yeah like that, that's a concern that this could be used in that manner to stop people from accessing podcast especially if i'm openly critical of that shithole communist government <laughs> oh yeah you definitely won't be on there yeah <laughs> if you make canadian enough content then you'll get promoted though yeah okay i'll start talking about hockey yeah yeah i'll basically. start talking about george st pierre and hockey <laughs> yeah does george still live in canada or i believe he does okay. he's here a lot he's here in austin a lot because he trains with uh, the donaher squad mm -hmm. you know gordon ryan and those guys so they're all out here He's retired, but like, what's his current lifestyle now? Is it just like training and social media, or? Well, it? you know, fortunately, George is a man of leisure because he made a shitload of money fighting, and mm. so he's really well off, and he doesn't have to do anything. But he does enjoy traveling and training, and the guy still is involved in martial arts as just a vehicle for developing his life. So he is super fit. I mean, like top-notch fit. The guy still does this, this rigorous exercise routine. He still trains with all of the, like these guys are professional jujitsu competitors. So with the Donaher team, it's a very unusual team. I, I know you've covered Gordon and the steroid use and all that jazz. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what I like about Gordon is he's fucking super open about it. You know, yeah, like yeah. he's not hiding shit. Yeah. He's like, look, everybody does it. This is what I do. I'm the best. Yeah, and and everybody's like, but, <laughs> but, but, but no. Yeah. <laughs> but what they do is they train 365 days a year. It's wild. Yes, and that's one of the reasons why you need steroids. Yeah, like that is not physically possible with a normal endocrine system to be recovering from six and eight hour workouts mm -hmm. every day, 365 days a year. You're gonna get breakdown. There's just no. I mean, I don't give a fuck how many ice baths you take. Yeah, you know, you're tra these guys are training all day long. They they they're doing different levels of training, right? So they're doing weightlifting training. So most of Gordon's work, Gordon's girlfriend was a professional bodybuilder, mm -hmm. and so most of his is just size and build. It's it's not really like functional training, like you you see the old videos of Alexander Karelin 